I want to make a video on keyframe editing, comparing After Effects to Anime Studio. So I have a box in both programs that are made from points. It's got a stroke and a fill. And I want to show you some similarities between the two programs. So in After Effects, I can select my shape. And I have a three second timeline in each program. Let's say I change the position or translation from zero to one second. And then I change the scale from one second to two seconds to let's say maybe 125%. And then at three seconds, let's see, I go with rotation from two seconds to three seconds. Maybe I change it 90 degrees. So I can control all of those aspects, translation, transformation, and rotation. And I get keyframes for all of those properties. Anime Studio works the same way. I have my box here and I'm gonna to go to my uh, transform layer tool and I'm gonna do the same thing. From one, I'm just gonna click on the box here to give myself a keyframe. From zero to one second, I'm gonna translate it. From one to two seconds, I'm going to transform it. I'm just gonna scale it up. I don't know what size. And then from two, to three seconds, I'm gonna rotate it. Okay, it does the same thing. And I get keyframes for all of those. Now for the big difference between After Effects and Anime Studio regarding point and bone animation and editing. If I were to go into my path, that's what it's called in After Effects, and start a keyframe at zero and at one, maybe I take this point up. And at two, I take this point down, and maybe I also animate a second point. Okay, so over two seconds, the lower right, lower left hand point is moving down. Over two seconds, this lower right hand point is moving up and down. So there's two different uh, point animations there. If I were to select these two points, nothing changes in my timeline. These keyframes don't display any additional information, so it's hard to know what's really going on. So here's my animation. Lower right hand point goes up and down, and then the lower left hand point just goes down. This is where Anime Studio is very different. If I were to select my, my shape based on the points, so the Select Points tool, and at frame one, I'm gonna press Command F and give myself a keyframe. It gives me two keyframes. It gives me a keyframe in point motion and also in selected point motion. So the selected point motion channel is kind of the, the cool part of this. Let's go to one second. I'm gonna deselect my all my points, get my transform points tool, and I'm gonna move this point up and to the right, just like I did in After Effects. I'm gonna go to two seconds, and I'm gonna pull this down and to the right. I'm also gonna grab this point down and to the left, just like I did before. Okay, it's based on your selection. So I'm gonna select this point and, and uh, point you to the timeline here. This point is selected, and this red channel shows the animation for that point. This is the selected point motion channel. If I select the lower left hand point, there is different information for this point. There was only one specific keyframe for this one point. So if I wanted to go back and edit, let's say this point was moving too long over the first span and I wanted to speed it up a little bit, I would go in and select that red keyframe and move it to the left to make it a little quicker. So I could go quick, and then really slow as the rest of it unfolds. So based on your selections, your timeline will change. And if you deselect, it's a very compact version of your, of your keyframe. So when you select things, your timeline changes. The red channel is based off of your selection and the point motion within. Bone animation is the same exact concept. If I were to, let's say, select all of my bones and reset their position. That's a good method to, to use when you're starting animation. It kind of locks everything in place. So good, it gives you a good starting point. If I was to go to one, one second and escape, so I deselect and I, I move this one bone up and at two seconds, I move this bone down and this bone down. Let's say I do that. Maybe I do this one too. Okay. So based on your selection, it's going to change your timeline. So if I was to go back to frame one and deselect, okay, I have a very compact timeline. Okay, there's no 
red keyframe information. But if I, if I start selecting bones, the, let's say this one, over two seconds, I have in the selected bone angle channel, this bone moves over two seconds. But we know the bottom right hand one has three keyframes. So there's more information there. If I wanted to retime that one, maybe I want to make it slower over the first, I don't want it to take one second, I want it to take half of a second. I would select my bone and then go change the keyframe information so, so it happens quicker. So then you can see it's quicker and everything else moves. So remember, based on your selection, you're gonna get different information in your timeline. If you have no selection, it's going to reduce your timeline down to the most simple, simple, view that you can imagine. Can you imagine all of the keyframes that would be needed to display all this information? Oh, that'd be a mess. So I really appreciate Anime Studios thinking here uh, to make it a compact timeline. So really, why is this important to know? Well, as you probably know, animations get really complex really fast. So if you can't keep track of your keyframes, you're going to be lost really quick. Here's a simple example. I have a character who's showing frustration. So he scratches his head, and then puts his arms down like that. What if I just wanted to move his arms quicker, right? I wanted it, I wanted just his arms to move faster, okay? How would I, how would I find that information? Well, with this selecting our bones idea, if I select all four bones, the animation is now shown to me, oops, in the red channel. So here it is. This is all the information for my selected bones. You can select multiple bones or multiple points. And let's say I wanted his arms to go down faster. I can see that in my red channel right here is when his arms come down. So if I just selected those points right there and I made them happen maybe a keyframe faster, there we go. Select your bones, go to the selected bone or point timeline, and then you can shift things around or edit your points. I hope that was helpful. Happy animating.